Hello, my name's Tom Carhill. It's Saturday, no, sorry, Friday the 22nd of April 2016. I'm picking up the um, Alpon series again and I'm going to make some calls. I'm calling a guy called Baljinda Manda. That's B H A L J I N D E R dot M A N D E R at Pinset mason.com right and his direct line is 0207 490 6670 yeah he's he, well, it, it's to do with this dealings with Nimish Patel I was hoping to catch Baljinda before he leaves as he left the office today. Okay. Oh, right, so, um, and what's him? Could you just tell me his surname, please? Uh, uh, yeah, my name's Tom Carhill. Oh, uh, thank you. Oh, sorry, I mean Baljinda's surname. Sorry, could you just read to me? Oh, name? Manda. Manda. M A N D E R. Yeah, yeah, or if, if he's got like a boss, I'll go through, if, if, if he's not about, I'll speak to him. I'll, anyway, if you try and put me through to him, are you Nicky? Oh, I'm not Nicky, you're through to the main switchboard. Right, um, okay. Um, I can put you through to, um, did you want to speak to Nicky, his PA, or should I try um, Baljinder's line in the first? Nicky, Nicky, Nicky's best, because Baljinder wasn't picking up a second ago. Oh, right, okay, right, I'll, um, I'll just connect you to Nicky, and um, thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah, hello. Um, uh, that lady says, uh, "Can I speak to uh, Jenny Jones if she's if it's urgent?" Um, yes, of course. One moment, please. Thank you. I'll just um, I'll just wait. Um, if she answers, I'll put you straight through. But if it goes to voicemail, I'll come back to you. All oh, right. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, if possible, it's very important. I want to speak to someone for the weekend. It's, it's, it is important, you know, and they will want to speak to me. That's the other thing. They don't they don't know me, but they'll want to know what I'm going to tell them. Um, right, OK, thank you. I'll just, um, I'll just try and connect you through to somebody. Thanks very much. You're Yeah. Mr. Carhill, was it? Yeah. Uh, that's right. Are you calling from a company? Or, um... No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm calling. I'm calling with regards uh, 
uh, one of his one of his clients has been a development in one of his cases, which I don't think the client's going to be telling him about. But anyway, he needs to know urgently. Right. Okay. Thank you. And your first name is Tom. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, Tom Carhill. That's right. Yeah. Thank you. Hello, Tom. It's Jen. Um, I'm working with Bout at the moment. They're actually in a training session now for the moment. Yeah. Um, are you a solicitor? Are you legally trained? No, I'm, I'm, I'm a PA. But you know him quite well. You're not like a PA to like five other people as well. Oh, well, we all, we're all PAs to five or okay. five or six or okay. seven or eight other people, I'm afraid. Is there any, is there any, is there any, is there any, is there any chance Wait, I can... What's it in connection? Um, we can get hold of Bout. We're actually downstairs in our auditorium in a, in a conference. Yeah, it might be an idea. I, I'll start to tell you and then... Uh, I've, I've got five minutes. Do you know what I mean? It's not. It's, it won't won't take long. What it is is um, he's representing somebody called um, Nimish Patel, right? Yeah. In an insolvency yeah. issue right now. I've had dealings with Nimish in the past, um, uh, stealing money that he's meant to be uh, looking after on behalf of creditors and yeah. equitable interests in property disputes. And you know he's he's, he's he's a subject of more than one criminal complaint, right? Yeah. And the thing is, today I've just found out that he's just been um, reported to the police one more time, and there's another fraud investigation into him. Um, sorry, theft. It's right. theft this time, right? When, when did this happen? Um, it happened last night, and it oh, happened. Right, that recently. And yeah. I can, I can get. I, 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 I'm gonna. Oh, do you, would you like to take down the crime reference number? Um, no, I don't need that because Bell will, will get back to you. Right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the thing is, I'd like to speak to him now because the thing is that. With this issue, I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I, I've, I've heard your firm before. I've heard the name, but I don't know anything about your firm. Uh, but and, and I, I, I'm not aware of you, him working with um, Navi, uh, Sorry, I'm not aware, aware of him working with uh, uh, Nimish in the past. But you see, the thing is, Nimish goes through lots of solicitors because yeah. he can't work with the same one all the time because they no, refuse to work with him. And, and, sorry, are you an individual? Or are you from a firm? I, I am an individual, but the reason it's significant to you is because. Um, or you know, and your your um, you know your colleague is that such is the m method by which Navinda. I mean, sorry, uh, I'm getting them mixed up uh, uh, with Nim Nimish Nimish um, acts. He's not. It's so. It's how would I describe it? You understand that. Let's say you take on a commission, right, as a solicitor, right? You, you're 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 taking money um, to assist somebody do something thing is some of the things that he does they're so off the wall and criminal that um 
you could actually be considered to not really be acting as a solicitor if you were acting for him because it's like, well, you're not allowed to do that, you're not allowed to do that, you're not allowed to do that. You know, it's a bit like if, I, if, if, yeah. if you're a taxi driver yeah. and, I, and I got you to pick me up from a bank where I'd just robbed and you drove off. Do you see what I mean? It's like, well, yeah, no, no, come on, come on, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it, it, this, this is the problem. Now, um, the, the thing is that, the, the, I mean, this is the, the. I'll give an example of the audacity, right? Um, there's a court. I can, I can, I can I'll give you. I can't give the reference number. Like literally, off the top of my head, it'd take me five minutes to find it or on the email and stuff. But um, such is the audacity of his criminal behaviour, right? Is that in the past, there's like a a high court order saying that I'm an actual interest holder in a, in another fraud that he was doing right. and what he did is he um, stole fees off me so he's done the exact same thing in the past yeah. it was on a bigger it was on a bigger fraud this is a less yeah. complicated fraud that he's done this time but you see the point is that in that particular instance there I've been out of the country I've been out of the country for more than I've only just got back in the country a couple of weeks I've been out for like three years so I had to leave certain things because you know because I literally wasn't in the yeah. country had to pick them up when I get back but you see one of the things that he's trying to do is he's um he's accidentally put out I, I believe via your company he's put out a letter to try and scare somebody into paying him some money um, in, in this insolvency, right? And he's marked down that the freeholder um, in this company called Bestville Properties Limited, right? Yeah. On the 26th of the first 16, um, he's he's asked for some money, and he's put down on this letter that the freeholder is a secured creditor, right? Now, whether that's the case or not. You know what that might be the case, may not be the case. But the point is, he's then stolen eighty grand out of the pot. Now you can't steal eighty grand if there's a secured creditor. So I'm not saying the guy is a secured creditor. I'm not saying he's not a secured creditor. The point is, your um, colleague's client says he is a, cre a secured creditor. So therefore, he's stolen eighty grand. So by his own documentation he's stolen 80 grand and this is very similar to the fact that there's high court orders it happened just before I left the country saying that I was a an equitable interest holder you know like Trump's even secured creditors I don't know how much that is you know you know you've got unsecured creditors secured creditors they get the money first can I, can I just stop you actually if I could just summarise um, what are you actually to him because I'm not sure that I understand what am I to him yeah, he, he owes me a great deal of money, but you see, this is where the issue comes in, right? When you're dealing with somebody who's got... I, I, I know all about his... Well, I don't know all about him. It goes... It gets quite expensive, but I know a lot about his shady business associates, yeah? They're lawyers, solicitors, accountants. He has to keep using different ones because, obviously, otherwise it becomes obvious they're just working as a criminal gang. And are you, are you working as a professional or are you just a businessman or what... what? I'm just I'm just somebody who got um you know he 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 owes me um he, he stole the property off me completely you know it's complete, he was involved with stealing it and I'm I'm just saying that I've it's come to my attention that there's yet another criminal this is just another thing I'm going to have to chase up now because yeah. this is yet another right. crime. Have you have you spoken to Bell before? I've never spoken to him. No. You've never spoken to him before, so Bell doesn't know. But but the, the reason this thing is right. I mean I'll, I'll send him an email in a little bit. Yeah. But but but, but, but the important thing is. The, the important thing is, I don't know or really care how well he knows Nimish. I mean, not Nimish. Yeah, Nimish. But the point is, he needs to get, he needs to put his best foot forward. He doesn't want to get caught up in this great, look, there's, there's probably a hundred names if I actually worked out. All the people who've had their reputation sullied from working with Nimish, at least half of them know full well what they're doing and they're just doing it for money. But the point is... Um, and it's been going on for quite a while, so I'm, I'm sure he knows quite a lot of what this person's been up to. So, um, yeah, but he, you see, the, the issue with it is, right, is that what what often happens is other people are just pretty much doing their job. They might, you know, they kind of, they, they, they assume that the people are doing things legally because, you know, they are, appoint, they're not appointed by the court, they appoint themselves, but, you know, they are effectively yeah. acting like officers of the court. But the point is, things like putting in, like, for instance, um, putting in, 
uh, you know, an affidavit into the court to start an insolvency procedure, and you put it in the Vong insolvency procedure. Like one of his favourite tricks used to be using administrations rather than liquidations, yeah. and then then he'd basically use it as a kind of colour of law. Um, you know, you'd have like a reference number, and people think, oh, it's got a reference number. It's gone through the court. Well, it must be fine. But you see, the point is, is that other people think, well, it's sort of like the court's kind of accepted it, but they haven't ever accepted it. It's like if I put a, an advert on a tree for a lost dog. You can't sue the, the, the tree if I've lied and I haven't got a lost dog. It's just, you just stick it on the tree. The tree doesn't have any responsibility over whether it's true or not. This is how the, the court's working in a lot of insolvency issues. But you see, um, I'm quite happy to share with him. Like I said, um, it's in my interest that this particular matter here gets... Because you see, this is a very, very simple fraud here. This is him just stealing money that is completely, he's just stolen it. And he's even said that the guy is the secured creditor. He's stolen money off the guy who actually got him involved in the insolvency anyway. Because another liquidator had been appointed, yeah? And the freeholder decided, because he had a stake in it, that he wanted to put his own person in, in you know in on the job as well. So Nimish has gone on and so he's not even he's even stolen money. If you if you look at it from the sort of practicality of it, he's stolen money from the other insolvency practitioner because the other insolvent you know, I mean fair enough the fact they shouldn't have taken any money at all, it would have been a loser. Because you know when you take on an insolvency job, it's um it's a risk, yeah? You you don't get guaranteed to get any money. You can't just take money out because you just want money. You know, it doesn't work like that. You've got to make sure you chase up the different debts. You've, at the very minimum, you just say, look, this is not going to, the firm's got no money, and that's the, you know, like, and this is our report, and it took us a couple of weeks, and we're not going to recover any fees, and it's going to be over administratively burdensome for us to pursue it any further, and we think maybe they're owed some money, but it's going to take too long to look into. It's that, that's the kind of reasonable approach you would expect people to make. They don't do that. They ignore all the evidence. I mean, he's meant to be acting for the freeholder. He's now ripped the freeholder off because he's stolen, according to his own thing, the guy's a secure creditor. I'm not saying he is. I'm not saying he isn't, but he's stolen from the guy. Because, he, he, you know, you see what I mean? He's contradicted himself. He's either, he's either stolen money from somebody who's entitled it to it, or he's um, defrauded, he's, he's committed fraud by saying he's a secure creditor and then how's he taken and he's also stolen it it, do, it doesn't matter whatever he's right. done it's, it's sure serious serious criminality time and time again and, um, he has yeah 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 definitely I was obviously aware of all this so it's just one more thing to worry about but the thing the thing with this thing if you grasp the nettle right if he gets onto it if he gets back to me as soon as he you know as soon as he gets back to me i can help i just, I just, I just want it because yeah. if he's if he's got the means he can he can he can get it off his plate what in this kind of situation if that's what you need to do you need to get it you need to get it off your plate because what what will happen otherwise is um people will start looking around and this is what happened in the last instance there's you know, like of all the professionals involved with the gang that he was involved with, so it wasn't just Nimish; it's other people, right? Um, you've got in, insurance. Um, you know, the insurance firms for about five or six different solicitors are getting pursued, and then the insurance, the various people's legal insurance are getting in. The amount of people who get in trouble over this because they all think, no, 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 he wouldn't do that because he's um, a reputable businessman and he wouldn't have the audacity to go to court, put in. Well, the other thing he does is he gives people draft um, applications to the court. So he'll go into the court to put in the witness statement, which he uses to start, you know, an action to put it into administration. But you, like the court will see it, but nobody else will ever see it because he gives them drafts or, you know, stuff like that. So he'll mark it draft. Yeah. So, so he'll write different things in the draft to what he puts into the, into the court. Now, and I'm going to show you this as well. There's a barrister... Michael Jeffries, right? Uh, not Y, Je Jeff, uh, you know, I E S, yeah. Jeffries, right? He wrote, um, he wrote a opinion, probably about thirty pages long. It's all simple stuff. I mean, you don't have to be a solicitor to know, you, you know, like basically these people. This was to justify. This is what Nimish said it was to justify calling the people in this other scam um, creditors when they weren't creditors. They'd actually sold them stuff, but hadn't sold them it. It would just been a, a complete fraud, yeah, properties, right? And he'd said, 
these people, I'm going to continue to call them investors because they've been called investors, but strictly they are not investors. They have actually bought things. So the guy actually explained, and there is no, but he basically explains there is no way that RE10 can take the money. But of course they did take the money. So they've got a barrister. He said they can't take the money. Yeah. If you, you know, it's, it's, this is this is very simple stuff. You don't need to get a barrister's opinion. Then they've gone and used that as the basis to just give it to people and people read it. It takes ages. Most people don't read it all. Um, they think, oh, I don't want to appear stupid. So they go, oh, well, that means, well, they've taken it. But it, it actually said the opposite. It said you couldn't take it. So they're, they're even contradicting their own solicitor's advice and then using that solicitor as a, as, or, or barrister, as it, the case may be, as an excuse, you know, to have done what they've done, making out as though they've endorsed it and that they've followed their advice, but they haven't. But the thing with it is, people, there's a myth that it's complicated. It's not, it's not actually remotely complicated. It's, it's just so in your face obvious what he's done. Yeah. It's completely criminal. There's nothing remotely complicated about it. They just, and the other thing is what he does is he'll give people like absolutely humongous stacks of paper, which is like his work. He calls it his work. Yeah. And this is what he's charging 80 grand for, yeah? Um, and what it is is it's just like it's just like he's just gone to the any file and he just prints everything off and he just goes right um, and he'll write like two or three lines on the front. But it's just nonsense. It's just like it's just like just like look look. Have you got some files that I can just put through the photocopier? Yeah. They've got nothing to do with anything. And then he goes right. That was eighty hours work. And you know, give me eighty grand or something. It's, it's, this is the kind of way he, where he acts. It's absolutely. Cr- but as I said, it's it's important that your guy gets onto this because. Yeah, well, Um, what time's he like he to? He was going to send him an email, giving the outline. Yeah, but it takes the, the problem with emails is, I mean, you, you, I, I can tell that you're you're experienced enough that you can tell him that. I, and I, I, obviously, you can't uh, divulge, but obviously, I, I get the, I get the, the impression you know more about this than you, you know. I mean, I'm not saying that in a, a negative, pejorative way, but you know, you obviously, I, I can I can tell you you kind of un, you'll be able to understand that you understand the point and you'll be able to get the point across to him. But yeah, I would like to speak to him today. But it's mainly just a matter of, I want this thing kicking into touch. Because there's at least three other criminal... Because, look, the, the point with Nimish is, right, he... Nimish, I don't believe... I mean, Nimish's a mason. I know he's in the masons. I know he, he is in the masons. But he wouldn't be doing this stuff, like, five minutes' walk from the fraud squad office, which is where he used to be based in Albemarle, if he's not in a Freemasons. It's people behind him are more... Look, Nimish isn't very clever either, right? He's not very clever. He's definitely... He's got no charm. He's got no ability to... You know, he's not... He couldn't sell. He couldn't... You know, he can't do any... He's not really got got any particular capability. It's like he's just got... Like people have said, it's like having a HGV licence. People are just... Other criminals are using him to do things. And... but, But, yeah, but the point is that... So you you can just tell by talking to him once that there's no possibility he's and he also he's not original. None of this stuff he's done is you never sort of think oh I wouldn't have expected him to do that. You often think you wouldn't expect him to do it, but it's not because it's clever. It's because it just it's just like you, what he did that he did that exactly. I mean, and my my other my other concern my concern at the very very outset this is going back years now is that he would just disappear out of the country because he had a colleague called Bijal Shah right Bijal spoke English very well was from England he was an Indian but he's from England and um but with Nimish Nimish is not that kind of he's not doesn't speak well and he can't you know he, he struggles with English a little bit you know he can speak it but it's not it's not he's not it doesn't sound like he's from England anyway and I was worried that he would bolt out of the country. And you see, this is the problem that I found with Indians in the past: is they disappear. If they disappear, you know, like nobody really knows. Like they can get paperwork to come in the country. I mean, that might not even be his real name. Do you know? Do you know what I mean? And oh, he's got so that. much heat on him now. Be, What's that, Zoe? It could be anything. It could be. It could, it could be. It could be any. It could. It could. It could be anything. It could be anybody. Yeah, and again, like his, his what, 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 this one thing that sort of promoted this fear probably in me subconsciously with his mate um, Bijal. Bijal, he's a man, right? But if you put Bijal into the internet, Bijal Shah, there were women. More women are called Bijal than men. So you're sort of thinking, you know, this, this is the kind of thing, you know, like it's very difficult for them to just disappear and they could just disappear. And I know they do do business in England, India and RE10 occasionally you'll get an email from India. 
but but instead i've been out of the country i've completely dropped this i haven't done anything with it for more than two years and i've just got back today i've just been to court today um uh, I won't go into the details. I said it's just uh, it will just be like some ir irrelevance to you. But the point is, as I said I'm picking it up today. I'm going to follow up the police issues. But the point is, what I'm saying is, you can't rely on you can't rely on the fact that it's a crime and the police should deal with it. It's not good enough because the thing is, there's people in the police. Like he used to work. He had they're Freemasons, right? And he's. He's, he's got people he's got people working with him right i've had police phone me up threatening me over this right um threaten me you know like as in will arrest you for this will arrest you for that just trying to make up silly things they're 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 desperate again this wasn't a particularly smooth operator because it didn't obviously convince me but i've got actually there's actually a criminal complaint against me if you'll believe it for harassment for telling the police about what one of the gang was doing you, but, but you see, I mean, it's nonsense because they can't investigate the arrest. But the point is, you, you know how difficult it is to get an actual full crime reference number nowadays. It's very difficult, isn't it? Oh, yeah. So they're just giving them out like they're like, you know, like giving out yeah, cigarettes because, at a bus stop. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. My email address is the same as my name, only it's a zero instead of an O in Tom. So it's Tango Zero Mike. Yeah. Charlie Alpha Hotel. Yeah. Indigo Lima Lima. Yeah. At hotmail.com. Has it got a dot in the middle of your name or is it all one word? No, all one word. So it's T zero M C A H I L L. No R. Don't put an R in. People just like putting R's in there, but yeah. there is no R. And at hotmail.com, and um, yeah. my number here is 01634 280371. 280, did you say? 280371. 280371. Okay, my name's Jan Hartman. Jan Hartman, okay. Um, and hi, I'm not actually Val's PA, but I do work with him quite closely. Yeah, no, no, you don't want to, look, it's just, you know, this is important, I mean, I, I don't, I, the reason I won't, don't sound sort of like desperately and not insisting to speak to him again and again, there's no, there's no but you know, like, it is important, he'll realise it's important, and I, I'd like to speak to him because, again, yeah, look, cool. I know for a fact, I've seen it in front of me, he has said the freeholder is a secure creditor, he's then, it, there's other stuff going, trust me, that's only one thing he's done wrong, the, but I'm not saying the guy is a secure creditor, I'm not sure, but I know for a fact that the fact that he's 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 he got taken on by the freeholder, the guy who initiated the voluntary liquidation, right, was not the freeholder. The freeholder got Nimish to kind of like combat what he saw as a hostile action because the the two parties had fallen out. The freeholder had fallen out with the kind of the business, if you like, yeah. Right. Right. So then he took Nimish on. Nimish is obviously, I mean, he, obviously he's going to have really upset the per, the other insolvency per practitioner who is completely cut out of it just by stealing the money. I mean, and what can the other guy do? I mean, obviously he's going to be keeping quiet about it now, yeah, right. but what happens... He's, he's bleeding down the line. What's, what's, what's going to happen? And you see, the point is that, like, I can I can spiel off names of police in the fraud squad who, who will be more than happy to help Nimish out and also people in, this, in, the, in the Met, but... Unfortunately for Nimish this time, this has been put down as theft, so it's not going to get sent to the National Fraud Intelligence Bureau, and it's not going to go to the city yet. It's theft, because he's actually taken money. They haven't, you see what I mean? It's not gone down, oh, it's 50-50, it's civil debt. Civil. This has gone, the guy knew what to say, and it's gone down as theft. So it's been dealt with by proper police, not the Freemasons of the City of London Police. So it's not going to be able to get caught, because what they were doing before, every time a criminal complaint was made to do with anything to do with some of the other frauds, they would just bolt it on, it would go to the same people, and they just wouldn't do anything. Yeah. So, yeah, anyway, 
Uh, right, all right, Jan. Uh, so okay, if, if they got, if, what, what does so it? You've got, you've got my details. You've got, have you got Bell's details? Bell's email address. Yeah. What is it? Uh, B H A L. H A L. J I N D E R. It's actually. Let me just check because that's his full name, but it's called Bell. B H A L. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay, right. And, um, right, that's his email address. Um, what's yours? And, and you on, are you Jan dot Hart? Yeah, mine's Jan dot Hartman at PinsonMasons.com. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, well, I'll, I'll CC you in an initial meeting. So um, yeah, yeah, it's just because right. I need I need, I need to tell it, because you see, this is the thing. What I don't want to have happen is it's important that your guy knows about this, and it'll be very useful that he knows. And also, because I've got some things I need to chase up either today or tomorrow with the police. And uh, as I said, because things have ha things have been going, it's amazing. The police just seem to have thought that they fobbed everybody off long enough. But you see, when I was in out, you can't deal with this stuff when you're out of the country. But bet I'm back now, so it's all going to get dealt with. That's the frustrating thing about it, isn't it? So unless you're actually on site. Uh, when, and it's the price of like even th stupid yeah. things like the price of phone calls and you know when you're away lots of people won't fo phone you back if you're in another fo foreign jurisdiction because they're, no, they're, they're no, so you're just you're just and also like sending letters to places when you're moving around it's it's impossible yeah, it, it's, it's not impossible but, it's, well, it? but yeah. uh, anyway we've got each other's details um, I'll try and have a word with Bell um, before the end of the day um, and he'll probably get back to you on Monday now yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. I, I doubt he'll be able to get back to you by the end of today because they've got this conference on and there's something going on straight afterwards as well with clients. So um, I don't, I'm not sure whether he's going to come back to his desk, but um, he'll get all the details and uh, hopefully get back to you by Monday if that's okay, Tom. Yeah, yeah. All right, Jen. All right, night. Have a, have a nice weekend. Thanks for taking the time out. Bye now. Bye bye. Bye. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that's that's Tom Carr. He'll call in. Pinsent Mason, and that was Bal Manda, and that's spelled B H A L J N D E R dot Manda M A N D E R, uh, and that is the twenty second of the fourth, sixteen twenty sixteen, and it's at sixteen thirty six. The call has just ended. The lady I was dealing with was Jan Hartman, and that's Jan dot Hartman at pinsentmason.com anyway uh, and the number just in case you need to check again is either 0207 418 7000 or 0207 490 6670 all right there'll be more calls made today and um i'll just bang them all up on the internet at some stage so maybe today i'm not too sure tactically i'm not sure how i'm gonna do it all right thanks a lot um any comments you 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 contact me and i'll get back to you and um uh, hopefully i'll be able to help you thanks a lot bye bye